Good day, dear colleagues. Today I'm going to present you the DC23 data collector and vibration analyzer. As this is a data collector, the most important way of its operation is the collection according to the root. Once you have a root, you can download it from the computer and it has the full structure of your equipment. For example, here I have a small demo stand and I have set up it in the database. I have bearing number one that is located here. I have bearing number two that is located here. I have motor that has a few measurement points. This is the electromagnetical part of the motor. Plus I have bearing three that is located in the free end side of the motor. So first Let's start to make measurements of the bearing one and I assign it channel number one. So channel number one is the green one, it goes here, and then it goes to the data collector. So this is channel number one. Additionally, I have channel number two. Ch channel number two is yellow one. I assign it to the bearing number two. So this will be channel Number two, this is channel number one. I have the complete setup. I switch on my machine like this and I start measurement by pressing enter. So what goes first is the data acquisition. It takes about a few seconds for the data acquisition and then from one time domain signal we calculate a lot of different spectras, overall levels, it can be orbits, time wave forms, etc. etc. So once the process, process is done, this is the measurement is complete. I switch off the machine so that we can hear each other. So what do we see here? We see here first of all is that we have an alarm. We have an alarm at this point. From what from where we get this alarm? This is the thresholds for the defects, for the condition that were downloaded from the computer. And if we go and see by the review button, the measurements that we have here, we have a few measurements. First of all, this is envelope spectrum, auto spectrum, overall level, and another auto spectrum. And you see that we have some alarms that have been downloaded from the computer. So we have low signal, we have alarm and we have danger. So we see that here this is a little bit of alarm interaction. So this is the envelope spectrum. This is the old spectrum and you also see that we have some alarm levels. This is overall level and this is the overall level in this frequency band. So this is 3.2 millimeters per second RMS in 10 to 1 kilohertz band. And we have Two measurements here. The previous one was 3.7 and now we have 3.2. So we have a little bit of a decrease in overall level. And we can also see the previous one. This is actually 4. And the last one is 3.2 millimeters per second. Uh, we also have here an auto spectrum up to 25 kilohertz that we have programmed to measure. And the frequency resolution of this spectrum is about 1 hertz. So if we go back to this spectrum and we go to the analysis of it, you see that we have a very 1 hertz frequency resolution. This is the cursor position. This is 1 hertz frequency resolution up to 25,000 hertz. So this is 25,000 lines actually. You can zoom it around the cursor and see what is there in this very spectrum. So, also we have the two different spectra from the previous measurement and from the current measurement. We can just compare it and feel. Actually the same with all the measurements. If we go to the bearing number two, we can also review the data and see that the 
spectrum here, this is the envelope spectrum, is very different from the previous one. And we can go to another measurements as well. This is auto spectrum, this is overall level, uh, this is uh, the Again, the spectrum up to very high frequencies, 25 kilohertz, with very high frequency resolution. So, this is how we do measurement. What I want to draw your attention especially is that we have uh, collected once the time domain data. And from this time domain data, we have calculated very many different measurements. So, this speeds up, speeds up the process. I can also show you the uh, measurement on the water. So, for example, I have the second channel on the radial point, and we have radial and tangential point, and I say that it will be here. I have, I will put the sensor in tangential direction, like this. I will start my motor, and we'll get the reading, like this. It is very important to say that the diagnostics of the induction motor, and here I have an induction motor, it is quite a complicated task, and we have to have very high frequency resolution. That's why we collect data for quite a long time. This is long, the longest measurement in the vibration diagnostics, I would say. So it's about 20 seconds. The data are collected, now we have some processing, and you can take the accelerometers and go to somewhere. So, let's see what we have measured. We can review the data. And here we have two spectra, one up to 6400 Hz, and another is very high frequency resolution around the rotation speed. So I have 3000 RPM water, and this is my rotation speed. If I go to here and zoom it, I see that my rotation speed, that is 49.5, it's split into many lines. I have many sidebands. This is the sidebands on the fleet frequency. And in this way, I can make diagnostics of the squirrel cage. So this is a defect of the squirrel cage. If it was a single line here, I would say that the water is in good condition. But in my demo stand, I have damaged squirrel case, cage. And in, because of this, I have very many sidebands. So this is a very simple diagnostics of the squirrel cage. So, uh, that's it uh, for the um, data collection according to the root. I can also tell you that uh, we do not need to look at all the spectra. If you adjust the data collector mode, you can just put, for example, we have bearing free horizontal. This will be channel number one, bearing free horizontal. We can put bearing free vertical, like this. We can start our machine and just make the readings by pressing enter button. This is about 11 seconds to collect the data. We do not need to look at the spectra. Now we can now we can put one, sec one sen sensor XL, because the next measurement will be XL. The data C, XL, and we do not use the second, and we do not use the second sensor, and we press enter. So in this way, we make the data collection in three different directions. Horizontal, vertical, and axial. Again, some data collection takes place. And that's it. Data collection is finished. We have some data processing. We may not look at the uh, results of the measurements. You can just save it and download it to the computer. So here we have completely finished our root collection, and we can see that the only problem that we have here is, is in the bearing one, that is this bearing, and we can do also some analysis and field. For this, we go to the review. We look at this spectrum. Uh, this is the uh, envelope spectrum. 
and we can go to the analysis mode and look at the frequencies like right? frequencies we know the bearing the bearings are in the model here we have selected that from a file that we can then go to the computer we have selected the bearing type 18 like this and now we have rpm harmonic okay we have cage harmonic not in there we have whole spin frequency not in there and we have BPFO, this is out arrays, ball pass frequency out arrays, and we see the exact feed for all the frequencies. And we have BPFI, this is in arrays, not there. So we can say that this is BPFO. And this is out arrays defect of the bearing. Uh, we can also say that this is, for example, BPFO and select the frequency of modulation. For example, we can select cage frequency fundamental train frequency. We apply it and we see that we also have the feed for the BP uh, for the cage frequency or the fundamental train frequency. So we have actually some uh, outer is frequency modulated by some frequencies. And this is BPF and this is FTL. So we can we have a possibility to change the modulation. We can move the harmonic cursor. And this is actually an in-field analysis. So for this very bearing, I would say that we have a problem of the outer rays, we have a crack of the outer rays, and we have a problem with the balls. If we have BPFO modulated by FTF, we can actually say that we have non-uniform size of the balls in this very bearing. So, we leave the root mode, we save the data, and that's it. This is the operation in the root mode. You can download data to, to the computer for data storage and analysis. So, to finalize this, we have a very fast root data collection. From one time domain data that we collect, we can calculate five, six, seven, as many as you want measurements of different uh, brands and uh, different types. Uh, we can do in-field analysis by the analysis of the defect frequencies, not only of the bearings, but of the motors, of the pumps, of the turbines, etc., etc. So, thank you for your attention. The next video will be devoted to the analyzer mode of this instrument. Thank you.